Philippians chapter 1, verse 3. I thank my God every time I remember you, constantly praying with joy in every one of my prayers for all of you. And a second part is 2 Timothy. No, excuse me, I turned the wrong page. Second part is, I got it. <laughs> First Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 18, verse 18. Give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. You may be seated. And at any time, if you need to sit down, go ahead and sit down. Don't. You don't have to stay standing if you're not able to. Amen. That was good all the time. Amen. Amen. I want to tell you just a little bit about the, the, the guy I'm going to be uh, using in a, a video from this morning to kind of get us started, started thinking about thankfulness. His name is Nicholas James. They call him Nick. Uh, we have a Nick here that he's not able to be with us this morning. But, uh, the, uh, but the, uh, this last name, I want to take a stab at it, but it's something like Vujicic. V-U-J-I-C-I-C. -I 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 okay, so... If, if I didn't pronounce that suitable, you can pronounce it. But, uh, he's an Australian Christian evangelist and motivational speaker born with Tetra Amelia syndrome. It's a rare disorder characterized by the absence of all four limbs. As a child, he struggled mentally and emotionally as well as physically, but eventually came to terms with his disability and at the age of 17, started his own nonprofit organization. Life Without Limbs. Vujicic presents motivational speeches uh, worldwide with focus on life and with a disability and hope and finding meaning in life. Uh, he has a wife and, and two children. Uh, so take a, listen, take a look here. Take a listen. Make sure you get it loud enough everybody can hear it. It's, it's, it's a long story. <laughs> but it's 
it's very simple to say you might be. You see, it's very hard to smile sometimes in life through things that happen that you don't know and you don't understand. And you don't know if you're going to get through it. You know, you go through your storms in life and you don't know how long your storm is going to be. And today I want to share with you some principles that I've learned. first principle, I hope you can hear that. He's very uh, energetic, and I don't know how he swims. Uh, when he dives off into that water, uh, it, it shows him diving off. It don't show what happens after that. But he, you know, he's a guy that has not given up on life, and he uh, talks about being thankful for what you have. You know, say he's got a wife and two children, and he has a way of making a living. Uh, he's, God's made a works of miracles in his life. His first principle is to be thankful. You know, we shouldn't just be thankful on Thanksgiving. You know, you might look at this title and you might think, well, it's not Thanksgiving. Uh, I'm going to ask you how many of you thought that. But, you know, we kind of tend to want Thanksgiving as the time that we talk about thankfulness. We need to be thankful all year round, every day, every moment of the day. So today we're going to talk about thankfulness. Now, I think it's a virtue that's much needed today. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. God, we thank you for all that you've given us. We thank you for the songs and the messages in them, for your Holy Spirit that's already been here present today uh, in the songs and the prayers and, and the different parts of the service. We thank you uh, and we pray, Lord, now as we look into your word, uh, that you would be present to us, that you give each of us the message that you have for us today. Let me be your mouthpiece to share the things you have me to share that, so we can go forth and better represent you in the world, better, better be a thankful people. And a, and a people of, of gratitude and sharing your love in a world that needs to, to see uh, your love and needs to experience your love. Uh, just help us to be able to be to encounter you today and be able to go forth and, and better represent you in the world as a as a response to the message today. For it's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. Yeah. Our last reading that, that Ben read said uh, was First Thessalonians five eighteen said, "In everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you." Yeah, I'm going to be quoting quite a few scriptures today. I, 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 they read four, uh, but there's more than that, and I didn't want to make them have to be flipping around up here and have five scriptures at each time or something. So I'm going to be quoting some others to you. If you want to note them, note them when I when I quote them. Go back and, and uh, look at them later. You can, but but uh, you know the, the Bible talks a lot about thankfulness, you know, and, and being thankful and. Uh, you know, so I want to start by asking, who should we be thankful to, and what should we be thankful for? You know, who should, who should, we should be thankful, first of all, who we should be thankful to, to God. And that's the, you know, the, the definition that, that Jerry shared, talked about, being thankful to God. We should be thankful to God. Psalm 50, uh, verses 14 and 15, God speaking says, offer unto God thanksgiving, or the psalmist quoting God speaking, offer unto God uh, thanksgiving. We need to be thankful to God for life. There's a saying, uh, your life is a gift from God. We believe that. You know, God holds our lives in, in, in God's hands and, and our very life is a gift from God. But what we make of it is our gift to God. You know, I think that, that's not scripture, but I think that's a, a very neat saying, a very true saying. Your life is a gift from God. What you make of it is your gift to God. We have the power to give life. Uh, God 
God, God does that. Each day we, we wake to a new day and, and we experience life. We've been given the gift of life. We all woke up this morning and we were given the gift of life. But what are we going to do with that gift is what that, that little quote uh, calls us to ask ourselves. You know, your life is a gift from God. What you make of it is your gift to God. Also, we need to be thankful to God for salvation. John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him would not perish but have everlasting life. God loved. And if it wasn't for that, God wouldn't have created a plan to, to make a way for us, to save us. Uh, 2 Corinthians 9.15 says, Thanks be to God for his indescribable gift. Thanks for the gift of Christ. Thanks for the gift of Christ, for salvation. We need to be thankful to God for life. We need to be thankful for God for salvation, for making a way for us to be put back in relationship with God after we've messed it up. And we need to be thankful to God for all good things. You know, for food, for shelter, and love, for, for example. You know, all good things come from God. James 1, 17 says, Every good and perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of the heavenly lights, who does not change like shifting shadows. One of the translations says, to, with whom there is no variableness. That's a nice math term. Uh, we talk about variables in math, and, and the variable could be anything. It can change, but God does not change, is what that scripture is talking about. God does not one time call something bad to happen to us, and one time call something good to happen to us. Good things come from God. Bad things come from something else. Uh, we can't, God can bring some good out, good out of the bad things, so we can be thankful for the bad things, that God brought something good out of it for us, you know, and, and helps us to grow. Uh, but I think it's more being thankful for uh, uh, God bring some good out of it for us. You know, for those good things, those bad things, helping God to help, God helping us to grow through them, you know, and, and helping us to get patience because of our two rely on God more and all these things to grow because of them. You know, I see God working in the midst of everything that happens to us to bring something good out of it for us. God is in every good and perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of the heavenly lights, who does not change like shifting shadows. So then also in everything, be thankful. You know, we've kind of already covered that, but Philippians 4, 6 says, do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and petition with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. You know, everything that happens, you know, thank God, thank God for God's work in it, amongst it. You know, it, you, know you can't hardly say thank you, God, for, for this tornado that took my home, home away, but God... Uh, thank you for being there to help me through it. Amen. And, and uh, help me to, thank you for helping me as we look back, maybe to, to grow and draw closer to you because of that, you know, or, or whatever we can see God doing in the midst of that storm. And one of the songs I picked, if you, if you follow online, where I pick a song before and after the, the, um, uh, the sermon live stream uh, was, uh, about being thankful in the storm or, or praising God in the storm, you know, because God can bring something good out of it for us. But it, it's about praising God in the storm. So, you know, we don't, I don't necessarily think we want to, that we think, have to thank God for, for the bad thing necessarily, but for what God does with it and, and causes to happen in our lives. In everything, be thankful. You know, we, we make a choice whether or not to be thankful. You know, we can, we can think, what was me? I was like Nick on our video. I was born with no limbs. I can't do anything. And he could have just lay there all his life and not did anything. And what was me? But instead, he, he was thankful for what he had, for what God was doing. He had a mind. He's got, he can talk. He can, you know, so he started making his living, I guess, talking, you know, uh, using what God had given him, the, the gifts, the talents that God had given him. And, uh, and thanking God for that and concentrating on that rather than just concentrating. He made a choice to concentrate on that rather than just thinking about what he didn't have. And so I think we all have to make that choice. 
And we need to also, that's, that's three of them. To God, we need to be thankful to God for life, to God for salvation, to God for all good things and for working amongst all the things in our lives, but also to God for other people in our lives. You know, 2 Timothy uh, 2, 1 through 4 says, First of all, then I urge that supplications, prayers, intercessions, and thanksgiving be made for everyone, for kings and all who are in high positions. You know, how much difference would it make if we prayed for our leaders rather than just talked about what they're doing wrong all the time? You know, this time, I'm sure they didn't always agree with what their kings did, but, but Paul says here in, in 1 Timothy, first of all, then I urge you that supplications, prayers, intercessions, and thanksgiving be made for everyone, for kings and for all who are in high positions, so that we may lead a quiet and peaceful life in all godliness and dignity. This is right and is acceptable in the sight of God our Savior, who desires everyone to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. So we need to be thankful to God for all these things. But also, besides that, we also need to be thankful to each other. Uh, biblical examples of, of Paul's thankfulness to others. That's the, the other three scriptures, the three scriptures that you uh, heard that Bev read to you this morning, uh, besides the, the Thessalonian scripture that I've already quoted, uh, biblical examples of Paul's thankfulness to others. In Romans scripture, Paul is thankful to Phoebe and Priscilla and Aquila. You know, they are women and men that are uh, cohorts with him, if you will, in ministry. And he says, I'm thankful for you. And he expresses that to them in his letter to the church in Rome. And in 2 Timothy 1, uh, 16, 18, Paul is thankful for to Onesiphorus. Uh, he says he was a refreshment even when I was in chains, even when I was in prison. He was a refreshment to me. And so he is thankful for him. And he expresses that. And then in Philippians 1, 3 through 4, Paul is thankful to the, to the Philippian church, or the church of Philippi, because they have supported him when he's been in prison and everything. They've sent gifts, they've taken gifts, they've sent him help uh, in different ways. They have been a support to him. And so he, he expresses that to them in his letter to them. And he, and he tells them, I'm thankful for you. I thank God for you. So he, he we are to be thankful to each other uh, and some seem to have the attitude, you know, that the world or people owe them something. Paul wasn't that way. If, we, if they owe us it, we don't have to say thank you, you know, but if, if, if they, they are going, uh, doing something for us, you know, and they don't owe it to us, we need to be thankful for that. And we need to say thank you. And Paul expressed that. Paul practiced that. But some seem to have the attitude that the world or people owe them something. Again, I say this shouldn't be. We ought to feel that we instead owe a debt that can only be paid by our thankfulness. Thank thankfulness ought to be expressed, not just felt. Uh, I'm going to use Webster's uh, dictionary com comparison here for thankfulness and its synonym gratitude. Uh, it says our thankfulness is measured by our words. You know, we say thank you. You know, we tell someone, I thank God for you, or, I'm, or we thank God for somebody or for something. Our thankfulness is measured by our words. Our gratitude is demonstrated by our actions. You know, for, for Webster's, gratitude is an action verb. A person may make a great show of thankfulness by what they say and later indicate that they really have no real gratitude by how they act. You know, something for us to think about there. Paul and the Philippian church showed their thankfulness by their gratitude. Paul carried through and he, he said it, but he also expressed it to them uh, in, in the way he treated, the way he reacted to them, the way he did with them. Our gratitude plays out in how we live. I thought I was hearing crackling, so I was pausing to see if it was crackling. Uh, our gratitude plays out in how we live. It affects how we treat others. No matter what our state in life, a thankful person will find something to be thankful for. It will look for that. You know, it takes, a, it takes an action on our part to look for something 
to be thankful for? You know, what is our habit? Do we make a habit of looking at what's going wrong? Oh, I wish it would rain, or I wish it wouldn't rain, or do, or, or, or when it does rain, are we thankful that it rained? You know, or do, even though maybe it was came a flood, we, you know, do we say, well, at least maybe it gets some groundwater, you know, in there and 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 and, and help the drought, you know, or whatever. Maybe, uh, but find something to be thankful for. We make a, a conscious effort if we're thankful to find something to be thankful for, and we'll express it in what they say and how they act toward others. Uh, you know, again, consider our video clip. You know, to a large degree, thankfulness is a choice. You know, we make a choice to be thankful or to be mad or angry because something didn't happen that we wanted to happen. Because we were born with no new arms and legs or, or whatever the case may be, whatever our, our uh, situation may be. An unthankful person will only think of what they do not have and what they should have coming to them. Look at whatever else has got, and I don't have that. And they'll be mad because of that. They'll, they'll, they'll be out the world, and they'll be mad at other people. They'll be expecting others to do more for them, and they'll be angry and lash out when others do not do more for them. Nick, in our video clip, could have been mad at the world for the, what life had dealt him. Uh, but instead, he looked for a way to make it work and serve others with his life. He chose to think of the things he had to be thankful for instead of dwell on what he did not have. Which one are we when we think about thankfulness? You know, do we dwell on what we don't have? And it gets us kind of agitates us and we're angry in life because of it? Or are we thankful for what we have? 1 Thessalonians 5.18 again says that everything, give thanks for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Let's, let's be a thankful people and a grateful people and let's rejoice in what God has given us. Like the song that we sung, rejoice, rejoice. You know, let's rejoice in what God has given us. Let's serve out of an abundance of gratitude because of what God has done for us and for, us, for how, we're, how we are blessed. We are blessed to live in a country with freedoms of speech, religion, and that offers us opportunity. You know, we're blessed. We were, we're able to be here today because of those freedoms. Most of us have food on the table and a, and a roof over our heads. We have, we have uh, means we have a job or a retirement or a social security check or, or the opportunity to look for a job if we don't have it. We have friends and, and or our family that care. We are blessed. So, so let's serve God and others out of an abundance of gratitude for what God has done for us. As we encounter Christ at the table this morning, we can begin by expressing our thanks to God, saying thank you God. And we can depart to give thanks to others and to serve God and others out of gratitude this week. Thanks be to God. Let's pray. God, we, we confess that sometimes maybe we have tended to, to get into the, the, the attitude of woe is me for what I do not have. We look around at others and we see maybe that we don't have something they have instead of thinking about what we do have and how you have blessed us and saying thank you. So forgive us for that and help us to, to, to make a conscious effort and uh, to look at your blessings, to count our blessings as an old song says and to say thank you and to, and to say thank you to others and be a people uh, of action, of gratitude, showing our thanks to you and to others and serving out of gratitude as we go forth today uh, so that we can better represent you in the world and share your love. Of course, as you say that we pray. Amen. This is the Lord's table. It's not the United Methodist table.
at God's table, or that you're here, and maybe God's gift to you, and you want to partake with us, you're welcome to do that, whether you're young or old, remember this church or not. Uh, we, we pray and expect God to be present. You heard me praying already and asking, you know, as we count Christ at the table, we expect to pray and pray for Christ to be present spiritually as we, as we remember and as we take of these physical elements. We expect there to be an encounter with God for whatever needs we have today. Maybe you're here and you've never made a commitment to, to Christ before. And if God's speaking to you about that and, and you want to accept Christ as you're coming forward spiritually, if you, as you take, come forth and, and take the bread and the cup, uh, we believe you can do that. And if you do, let me know so I can help you with your new walk in Christ. But for all of us, maybe we've been touched by some something in the message today or something in the service. Uh, and, and, and we want to take that to God. We can do that. If we're coming and counting Christ to the table this morning. We can, we can ask for help and for strength or whatever it is that we're dealing with in our life or whatever healing we're needing in our life. We can bring that to, to Christ this morning as we count Christ to the table. So Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your law. We have not loved our neighbors, and we have not turned to God the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience to Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear the good news, Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love towards us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. Now to the great thanksgiving, the Lord be with you. And also with you. We lift up our hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let's give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Almighty God, Creator of heaven and earth. You formed us in your image and breathed into us the breath of life. When we turned away and our love failed, your love remained steadfast. You delivered us from captivity and made covenant to be our sovereign God, and spoke to us through your prophets, who looked for that day when justice shore down like waters, and righteousness like an ever flowing stream. When nations shall not lift up the sword against nation, Neither shall they win war anymore. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their ending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of fire and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ. Your spirit and known him to preach good news to the poor. To proclaim release to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind. To set at liberty those who were oppressed and to announce that the time had come when you would save your people. He healed the sick, fed, fed the hungry, and ate the sinners. And by the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church. Delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. At his ascension, you exalted him to sit and reign with you at your right hand. Of the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took the bread and blessed it and broke it, said, Take, eat this, and my body is given for you. As often as you take it, take your merits to me. So if you take the bread and you'll find it under the clear wrap on top, just pull that off first. Remember the, the body that God came incarnate in and lived among us, and how he lived among us, how he loved, how he ate with sinners, and how he loved everyone, and how he set an example for us. Remember that life as you take it the bread this morning. Then he took the cup and blessed it, said, Drink this, this is my blood, new covenant for us, for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. As often as we drink it, drink it merits to me. So if you take the cup, remember that God did all that needs to be done for us to be put back in relationship with God, to be forgiven, given a new chance, and given a chance to be a part of what God is doing in the world and sharing God's love. God did it. Remember that as you take the cup this morning. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. 
Christ is died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Let's pray. For out your Holy Spirit and us gathered here, and all these gifts of bread and wine, make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. Be present at our table, Lord, for whatever needs are here today. Let this be a real encounter of our spirits with yours. Or so we can go forth and better serve you and better represent you in our community and our world and better share your love to everyone we come in contact with. By your spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world. For Christ comes a time of victory and we peace in this heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty God, now and forever. Amen. Now with the confidence of the children of God, let's pray the prayer the Lord taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thy kingdom, 